Well, thanks for staying with us on the program. It seems to be a day where we we'll revisit a topic in a two-part discussion on certificate meals. Now, in, across neighboring countries, the likes of Benin and Togo, the issue has become one of concern, and the federal government has also moved to issue a statement through the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, on this development. Now, and also to get perspective from students who have had and experience schooling in such institutions. On the show this morning, we're joined by a graduate from an institution in Benin Republic who is also a writer, Mr. Nweke Daniel, who is in our studio this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, sir. And good morning, dearest Nigerians who are watching us today. Now, let's get perspectives from your point. Okay, sir. I believe you have seen the statement as <laughs> issued by the federal government with only three institutions in uh, Togo and five in Benin that have been reportedly accredited. I don't know, did you get the scope of this when you looked to gain admission in Benin? What informed your choice to gain admission in Benin? Okay. And how was your time in Benin? All right. Um, one of the things we, we are good in Nigerians is um, we, we always want to judge an effect of a thing, but then we don't look to consider the cause of the effect. So, in the law of cause and effect, we are oftentimes um, see ourselves judging the effect regardless of what cost why people are the way they are. Now, and again, there's this saying that you, you literally don't, you don't use because, you, let's say you're a farmer, sir, you, in your farm, you have obviously cultivated perhaps yam or other crops and on getting to the farm you find out that there are a lot of weeds in the farm and um, as a farmer what would you do you would calmly and carefully pick out the weed out of this farm then tie them up somewhere and get them burned and save your crop because it will feed you in the future all right now that is what an a wise farmer would do a wise farmer would do but then um, somebody who is not wise and who is a farmer who may actually have such experience will literally go to the farm and literally out of anger without everything including the crops and the weed and get them burned and he will starve in the future. Now this, can we actually look at the causes why students go to other uh, foreign countries to study including the Republic here. Now earlier in the time when I was looking for admission we found out that you write jam onto jams. Now, after work, you, you are made to write neko, which are beautiful. And um, after neko, you are made to write jam, which are nice. Oftentimes, you see people who actually pass this cut of marks. And you realize that with reason which we don't know, you will not be given admission. And you will, you will have to sit back for that one year. Then next year again, you come, you go to write another jam again. This thing happens over and over and over. Should I tell you how many times I wrote jam? How many times did you write jam? Okay, I wrote twice actually, the third time I got admission. Yes, I was, I was admitted in Nigeria University. Now, along the line, strike sent me out. To be honest, imagine applying for a course where you're supposed to have uh, finished in four years' time. And um, obviously there is a looming strike over and over, almost like months and months and years comes in, strike kept on coming. You realize that you, you, you already forecast your life that you're going to be in school for like seven years for a course of four years. You have to look for elsewhere. Now, this is what happened. Before I went to personal experience, though, before I went to the Republic to school, I obviously made an application online. Nobody sent me there. Certain people perhaps may have been told about how I was just looking for, to be honest to you, a better system where I won't have to suffer any strike. strike. I won't have to be running away from fellow students because of courtism and the rest of other activities in the high institutions. I won't have to be starting anybody to actually pass my course. So I was looking for a better system. I browsed nearby countries. When I got to see Benin Republic, obviously a French-speaking country, I had to go to the Ministry of Education. First move I made, I had to go to the Ministry of Education and ask, to be honest to you, what are the list of accredited universities in Benin Republic? I can still remember vividly well. And they gave me, okay, the first that I went, I was not 
given because I saw, I think a group of people we have been attended to, they came for evaluation. It was quite early in the morning. So I saw the crowd there and obviously it would be so insensitive of me to keep pressing when they are already busy. So I have to excuse and left that day. Second day I went, it was the same thing. So I took my time. The third time I went there, I was attended to. They gave me a list from the Republic, um, a Minister of Education, or a list of accredited institutions in the Republic, which I was at liberty to make my choice and say, okay, I would go for any of the list. Then I picked five out of them. On my own, I decided to go for one. Now, after schooling, and um, during the time of school, the Republic government were making policies, obviously. And the bad eggs were gradually being laid off by the Minister of Education and the government of the Republic. Only when that, you say bad eggs, you're referring to institutions where there's institutions that were not accredited because the Republic, as a country, will obviously not fold their hands when there's such issues going on. So they made some policies that sent some institutions that we are unaccredited to fold. Then only the eligible ones and qualified ones were, were operating. Then that was in my time of studies. Now, after much years of studies and coming to serve, then issues kept on popping up that the Republic students are having fake degree. That is an insult to us. To be honest, it is so insultive. And if, if I should tell you that a lot of people are being depressed as a result of this, it's appalling to be called to say that thousands of Nigerian students who school in the Republic are having fake degrees. For God's sake, how did we serve the country? Now, we also are supposed to be joined by a virtual guest. If he's ready, would have him patched onto the studio as well to get a scope of this conversation. Well, it's important to get perspective owing to the fact that you said that the government of Benin Republic and the Ministry of Education also did publish a list of institutions that were accredited. Yeah. Now, you're leading us to believe that before you made a choice of the institution in which you studied in, yes. you saw that it was amongst those accredited. In Nigerian in Minister of Education. Education as well. Yes. I went there three good times. What, what choice of subject, uh, of, of, of discipline did you apply I for? I went for International Relations. International Relations. Yes, sir. What uh, was the year of study? How many years did you spend in the I university? I spent completely three years. Three years there. Yes. So now, in that three years you spent there, did you have any interactions with some students who went through the shorter route of spending six months to obtain their own certificates? I think maybe I will take you to the root of uh, my campus experience. Perhaps it will highlight a lot of questions and answers. I, I went there as an intentional academic, academician. I love to express myself. I love, I love the school and academic activities, even when I was admitted in Nigerian institution here. I wanted to actually be my best in my field. I, I am that guy who just loves education. So going there, I saw an opportunity to shine abroad. Obviously, that, regardless of how you may see the Republic to be just a backyard country, it's still a foreign country. So when I got there, I, one thing I did was to align myself with the student bodies I met in Port Novo precisely. So on getting to the Republic, Port Novo, which is the capital, so I, I found out that there already existing body of students because a lot of students were on ground. So what I did was to align myself. I have to ask who is the pioneers of this? They told me. Who is the current president of, then it was called NSA, Nigerian Student Association in Port Novo. Who is the current president? They told me that they were, they were on a campaign period and they were about to have an election. All right. I made my researches and finally uh, certain people Certain of these uh, people who are contesting for the, the position of the Nigerian Student Association in Port Novo, then we are, we are men or, or students who have been on ground and understand the importance of education and want to actually affect or replicate the system, Nigerian system of education or student life in, in Benin Republic. And I have to align myself with a particular uh, candidate. And as a result, I get to know the intricate nature of schooling in the Republic and the beauty of it. Sir, the day of our election, to be honest to you, we counted over thousands of Nigerian students who came to vote. Obviously, not everybody have interest or have play in politics, but over thousands of people who came to vote for just a minor school activities. Then um, I aligned myself. Then in my campus along the line, I fall in, I became the ISUG president, and obviously we organize programs. 
we had inter-school competitions, debates and quiz, the rest of the other activities. And um, we spent the normal time every other person should spend in classes. We attend our classes, we, we wrote our tests, we wrote exams. Our holidays were not always long because theirs is not like ours. In fact, that holidays are like a week or two. Everybody's back to class. Like the, but the public don't joke with their studies, for God's sake. Why are, we, why are we always so emotional when we hear when the public graduate? We, we stigmatize them like they don't know what they need. Put them on tests. Put them on tests to know what they can offer. Now, the, the average people out there believes that everybody who goes to the Republic went to acquire such. Which average Nigerian at the age of 18, 20, 21 can afford to pay for a degree? I myself, where, where am I going to get the money? Where am I going to get the money to pay for a degree that, that I will not be able to, to defend and be proud of? Every average Nigerian wants to go to an institution and have the feeling of being in school. No young guy, I wouldn't be in totality anyway, no average young guy would want to go and protest a degree and come out a dummy to parade himself as a degree holder without knowing and enjoying the beauty of being a student. I don't think any average Even person... Even based on this extracurricular activity yes, you're talking about. Yes, I don't about. think any, any reasonable person would actually do that. Just to go and get a degree and jump back home. We all, at a time, wanted to leave our parents' home to go and experience life in school as average young guy. Now, that's what every stu stu student does. And that's what majority of us, all of us, did. So we left home to go, to go and experience the campus life. School would pass through us and we passed through school. Now, and, and, and somebody would say after such experience that we, we got a certificate and our schools and universities and institutions are not accredited. No, I, I would say maybe the, 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 the minister, with all due respect, uh, may have made a decision based on the information he got. But the we who experience what is on ground or what is obtainable in that country can actually say that majority of the things that is being aired out there are not true. Categorically, majority of what people are saying are just hearsay. I was in ground, I was on ground, I was in the Republic, I was in the literally in every state and con. I, at the time, I got an award, most popular student, organized by NIDO, Nigerian student in Nigeria in Diaspora, Bene. So, uh, we knew, or uh, I know what is obtainable, and we all, the graduates from the Republic, those who went to school, know what is obtainable in the Republic. And the system, we all abided to. Should I tell you the fact that even literally every school or institution, university precisely in the Republic, have uniform? Should I show you evidences on my phone? We have uniform where if you don't have a uniform, you can't attend lecture, you are bounced out. Should I tell you how I had lectures from Mondays to Fridays, 5 to 8? Now, whilst uh, Mr. Nwike Daniel says it might have been a case of hasty generalization, in review of the one year in office under the current Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, highlighting some of the achievements under his watch, he revealed that over 21,600 students are in possession of reportedly fake certificates obtained from certificate meals in countries like Bene, Republic and Togo, while advising Nigerian students intended ones who seek higher education in such countries to visit the portal to find out if these uh, schools have been accredited. It is also from the position of one of such graduates who says that they are students who, in the quest for higher education, pass through the system and spend the required amount of years to obtain a certificate. Let's get perspective as we have our, another guest join us virtually this morning to share his thoughts on this development. Hello, good morning to you, sir. Can you hear us? All right, thank you and welcome. Uh, nice to have you on the program this morning. We're discussing these issues of certificate meals. And whilst the Federal Ministry of Education is looking to advise intended Nigerian students uh, so that they do not fall prey to unsuspecting uh, reports. I don't know if you've had the privilege of also listening to the investigative reporters published by Nigerian journalists who says some Nigerians are in the habit of cutting corners to obtain certificates through certificate meals domiciled in some of these countries. Let's get your take on this.
It may seem as though uh, he has some network challenges joining us this morning, but let's just also, uh, for the sake of our viewing public at home, also give you a list of some of the universities uh, besides Benny and Togo that have been blacklisted by the federal government. The federal government has issued a statement as it concerns this said degree meals. Now, this has been published on the website of the Nigerian University Commission as well. The federal government has shut down 18 foreign universities in Nigeria, warning Nigerians to avoid enrolling in them. The government labeled the affected institutions as degree mills, noting that it had not licensed them to operate in the country. The National Universities Commission, NUC, in a statement published on its website on Tuesday, January 2, stated that the affected universities had been closed down. It stated that the NUC wishes to announce to the general public, especially parents and prospective undergraduates, that the underlisted degree mills have not been licensed by the federal government and have therefore been closed down for violating the National Minimum Standards Act of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. The affected schools include University of Applied Sciences and Management, Port Novo, Bene Republic, and any of its campuses in Nigeria. Volatile University College, HO, Volta Region, Ghana, or any of its campuses in Nigeria. The International University, Mansuri, USA, Kano and Lagos Study Centers, or any of its affiliated campus in Nigeria. Columbus University, UK, operates anywhere in Nigeria. Tui International University, UK, Purbles University UK, London External Studies UK, Pilgrims University or its affiliate campus in Nigeria, West African Christian University operating anywhere in Nigeria, EC Council University US Ikeja Lagos Study Center, Concepts College slash University London or its campuses in Nigeria, Irish University Business School London operating in Nigeria, University of Education Weniba, Ghana, Cape Coast University, Ghana, African University Cooperative Development, Kotonou Bene Republic, or any of its affiliates in Nigeria, Pacific Western University, Denver, Colorado, or where is Study Center, Evangel University of America, and Chudik Management Academy, Lagos. This latest development came a few hours after the Federal Ministry of Education suspended the evaluation and accreditation of the aforementioned university degrees in the Republic of Bene. The minister, however, stated that three universities have been accredited in Bene and five in Togo. If there's one part of the statement you made earlier, whilst we wait for our virtual guests to rejoin the conversation, okay. it is the painstaking effort you took to visit the Ministry of Education to check if the intended school you wanted to attend was listed under accredited universities? Was this based on an information from the NUC? Or what informed you in making that quest to find out if this university you're applying for was accredited? Earlier before my application to Bene Republic, I didn't know much about Bene Republic. I, I didn't know more. Obviously, they're French countries. So we, we barely, we from the Southeast have much connection. The most people who have so much connection to the Republic are the Westerners because they are very close to the border. States, Lagos, and the rest of them. So I barely had no information about the Republic. So I had to go to the Minister of Education. I, I, I want to state it categorically that the Minister to get information, please, Minister of Education, to get information about the country I intended to go to for my studies. The Minister have done so well. Please, we are by no means against him fighting the certificate racketing. We understand the implication of certificate racketing globally and how it actually can downplay our country. So we understand the nature of the implication of that. So he is actually fighting the right cause. Globally, certificate racketing is a challenge, is a menace, which every country who wants the education system to be, to be meaningful should fight. So I also applaud the undercover journalist. He have actually done well. However, should we say or should we leverage on the general saying that when a finger touches an oil, it affects the rest of the other four? Now, 
a wise person, I wouldn't agree with that saying. A wise person, if his finger touches an oyster, he would be wise enough to hold that finger and wash it clean and save his other four fingers or possibly five fingers so that the rest will not suffer the implication of what one finger did. Or perhaps in a capital uh, measure, cut it off and save the rest four. Because it can't assume because one finger touches away and allow it to stain the rest. That would be so insensitive and inconsiderate to do. So I would be wise enough to wash the finger that is stained, if possibly cut it off and save the rest four. Now, as much as there are measures on ground to tackle these challenges, it's beautiful. Please, our education system should be sanitized. But then should we sanitize at the detriment of the innocent Nigerian, thousands of innocent Nigerian students who school over there? Can we even be realistic? Is the Banner Republic the only foreign country that produces graduates to Nigerians? Who evaluates these people? I'm not trying to point fingers. Who evaluates the... In the whole continent, there's no country would go without seeing Nigerians being a student there. Who evaluates everybody? Why is everything always been a republic and Togo? Who actually evaluate the rest, the entire 54 African countries that obviously Nigerian students are graduating from? Different countries in the world. Who actually pays this scrutiny attention to them all? It's always been a republic. And I remember one thing. The Holy Book would say that a prophet is not respected in his own town. Because been a republic is just by the corner. And we have been taken for granted. I bet you we have value, sir. Now, in terms of your experience, having graduated from Bene and entering the Nigerian labor market, would you say that uh, the equal opportunities for graduates from such institutions in the Nigerian labor market? Equal opportunity? Are there opportunity anywhere in the reality? Can we, can, we be, can, we, can we be plain right now? Are there really opportunity for graduates? Regardless of the country of studies. If you don't have anybody, you have no opportunity, sir. Now, this is it. As much as uh, everybody will be like, you went to the Republic to get a certificate, are coming to compete with Nigerian graduate. Nigerian graduate, do they have work? Is that job an opportunity for a specific graduate in Nigeria? Is that anything to fall back to after studies? Now, if you get my question correctly, okay. there, there are ways some certificates are perceived. Okay. If you come back from the UK or the Americas, to seek for a job here in Nigeria, or even to go on the NYSE program, there is some sort of glorification that is given to the fact that you scored in abroad. the UK. Not, not abroad, abroad is generality. Okay. In the Specific UK, countries. In the UK or in the US. And then when it comes to your statement of saying Ben is just by the border to Nigeria, do you feel that some of these perceptions also affect the ways that graduates carry themselves in their quest to seek for the few opportunities that may abound? Okay, I feel there has always been this stereotype against Benin Republic graduates from day one that I never knew, but I'm getting to know right now. There have been this stereotype, there have been a kind of victimization. I have not faced it though, to be honest. I have not faced it because places I made an application, obviously, or learns if it's quite competitive, but not necessarily because you school in Benin Republic. There are people who have first class. There are people who are doing well than you grade academically. Obviously, they would consider them before you. But then, not because I schooled in Benin Republic. But then, that I have not experienced does not mean people have not experienced it. Yes, the, the inconsistent policies have actually stigmatized Benin Republic graduates and the rest of uh, uh, Togo too. So as a result, certain of these graduates are not even bold enough to make a step because they know the government may, or the government agencies may bounce them back. Now the truth is this. Certificate racketing, yes, there are people who are into this. But they're not an average Nigerian young 18, 20, 23 who are in university. Who gave them money to buy a certificate? You know how much they say the certificate? I don't know how much the journalist bought his. But we, we don't even have... I, this such thought never came to mind. You can actually buy a certificate. To be honest, because how can I go to school and buy... Who last time meeting to, to... Is it crayfish? Now, now, now you, you sound like someone who also prides yourself in being able to defend the discipline and enjoy the extracurricular activities, student unionism, one of them you embarked upon while on campus. 
Do you think that the system in some way is more engendered towards the degree on the certificate other than the ability to replicate that set qualification into whatever chosen field of endeavor yeah. an individual chooses to go into? I would, I would, I would say a thing, then dive into that question. The, the truth is, uh, like I, I said earlier, the minister is doing well. But one thing, again, calmly I'm saying is that the decision, please, should be made having the right students who have graduated from these countries in mind. People who buy certificates are of high class, not we. <laughs> we, we don't have the money to pay for certificate. We pass through the processes. Now, if any student who graduates from any institution, not necessarily by the Republic, is unable to defend or to replicate what he or she have or has in his degree, then the person must have not actually be a victim that he bought certificate, but an unserious student. Because this, this unserious student, like people who literally doesn't just have a flair for education, now, um, hold your thoughts. Uh, we'll be back to you, Mr. Daniels. Let's okay. see if we can connect with uh, Mr. Deomo Charles, who is an academician in Benin Republic and one who is, beyond being a student, has had the privilege of interacting in the institution from an, a more informed level. Hello, good morning to you, sir. Can you hear us? Hello, good morning. Um, Mr. Deemo, are you with us this morning? Well, whilst that connection is still buffering, uh, let's also give you a new insight into developments following the comments made by the Minister, Professor Tahir Maman. He says, Togo alone accounts for 1,105 of these fraudulent certificates. He has also uh, emphasized the government's commitment to eradicating fake degrees both from Nigeria and foreign institutions. He says that uh, the focus is not only on foreign institutions, but institutions operating within Nigeria as well that are enabling intended students obtain fake certificates. He says, and I quote, the federal government has directed the office of the head of Serv civil service of the federation to issue a secular to flush out anybody with fake certificates from these institutions. In Togo, there are three universities that are officially approved and licensed to offer degree courses. And in Bene, we have five institutions licensed for degree courses. Unquote. Let's see if we can reconnect to Mr. Ademo, Charles. Hello, Mr. Charles. Good morning. Can you hear us? Well, it may seem as though the network is uh, acting up this morning. But if we have Mr. Charles, could we patch him through to make his comments? Well, as it stands down, let's come back to you, Mr. Daniel. Sorry to have caught you up abruptly whilst you're okay, looking to okay. make your thoughts. Okay, I I want to also speak about the list of um, the three in Togo accredited university and uh, the five accredited universities um, in Benin in Benin Republic, according to the minister. I, 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 let me just ask you a question. It might put okay. you on the hot seat. Please go. Ahead. Was your institution amongst this ones now updated it's unfortunate that none of the private institutions in the republic is inclusive so these are federal universities that are mentioned now you would ask a question why are there no private institutions that are created how is the republic operating private institution and the government i know patrice talon the president of Benin. he doesn't joke with education now imagine him allowing uh unaccredited universities to operate in his country that man values education than anything. So he wouldn't even dare joke with anybody who is not obeying the policy that has been instituted for the land to operate. So any private institution that is operating in Benet today, boldly with their buildings erected, is abiding to the laws and principles and regulations of the Federal Minister of Education, Benet. So you know, I was surprised when... Yeah, hello, Mr. Charles. We can hear you. Welcome. Yes, yeah, good morning. Good morning to you. Had some difficulties reaching you, but now that we have you, quickly join the conversation. Let's get your thoughts on this developing story. Okay, thank you so much. To start with, 
certificate tracker is a global issue. It is condemnable and it is not what any reasonable person should support. And we have been following these developments. We appreciate Nigeria government for the bold step taken. It is commendable. And uh, I'm, I happen to be one of those interviews when the committee set up by federal government visited those countries. And we made our position known. To the extent of us being whistleblower to them, giving them tips on how this issue can be arrested. However, we are disappointed with some of the outcome, the decision taken. Uh, to the extent of saying only five universities are accredited in, uh, in the Republic. I'm sorry that is fallacy of generalization. Uh, those of you who are investigative journalists, I want you to do uh, further investigation on this. I can boldly tell you there are about 38 accredited higher institutions, degree awarding institutions in the Benin Republic. And you can fact check me on this. Hello, can you still hear me? Y yes, we're with you. You said there are 38 <laughs> accredited, according to yes. the Benin Republic yes. government, that are registered with the Ministry of Education in Benin, if I'm correct? Yes, about 38. And if if you investigate and you find out it is not true, I am ready to write an apology letter and publish on different pages of newspaper to the Honorable Minister. We understand the Honorable Minister is trying to bring in sanity, which is good. We are in support of that. But we are afraid with the, uh, with the uh, status. I think to have said only five universities are accredited in the Republic, I think is either the minister has been misinformed or, uh, although I don't want to believe some of the conspiracy theories we are hearing up and down, that the minister was the uh, vice chancellor of the private university in Nigeria, something has happened between that university and the certain university. I don't want to believe that. I want to believe the minister is trying to bring in sanity and we support this decision. But in trying to bring in sanity, I don't think the innocent children uh, should be punished for this. And another thing I want to call the attention of the minister to is the gravity of this decision. Some of the parents of these children who have been product of university in these schools are hypertensive. So immediately this information is released. Some of them are on different drugs. So immediately this information was released. The situation with them is worsening. Uh, I think we need to be more sensitive on the, on the issue like this. This fallacy of generalization, I think, is very dangerous. At a time when things are challenging in the country, people are being faced with different challenges, left, right, and center. I think whatever information we would make public, we need to be sure. These are information that are real. And another thing I want to say is this. Uh, in French system, they have different ways of categorizing uh, higher institutions. They have what they call university, they have what they call a course superior, and they have what they call institutes. They are all degree awarding institutions that the name of a certain school does not carry university is a course superior or uh, institute something like that does not mean that is not a degree awarding institution before nyc will mobilize these students they were very sure that the ministry of education did evaluation for them and anybody that has involved in the process of evaluating to the ministry will not just evaluate a degree they will contact the Ministry of Higher Education in that country. And they always request for the list of accredited schools. Even sometimes it takes as long as three, four years to achieve this. So for the ministry to have issued evaluation letter for this one, for to be mobilized by NYC, and the same ministry now coming back, that since 2017, uh, so uh, it's only five universities that are accredited. I think we need to be very scientific. Then let us also take note of this. Most of these graduates, even after their graduation, they travel to Europe, to America. They, their certificates are being evaluated by West and CGNFS and other, uh, other evaluating agencies in the foreign countries. Why are their certificates 
are acceptable by those evaluating agents, why is it that government of the mean is confirmed? Because those evaluating agents get back to the Ministry of Higher Education whenever they want to evaluate. Why is it that what is that working in other countries is not working in Nigeria? We need to be very careful. At the time when we are complaining of the brain drain, our people are migrating again. It may interest you to know that one of the best molecular scientists we have in Nigeria today, Professor Api, is a product of one of the universities in neighboring African countries. Please, we support this decision. We believe uh, the Minister of Education has enviable provide. Uh, as a younger academics like us, we are looking up to him. We, pray, we wish we can achieve the status he has got to. But on this decision, especially making it public that only five universities are accredited in the New Republic, I think it is unfair. The effect is more than what he has just announced. People are in turmoil with that singular relief. Please, I urge the National Assembly uh, Committee on Education to hold the attack in the New Republic and unfail the actual truth. A lot of things we are hearing that uh, some people are the ones sponsoring this. I don't want to believe that. But the ministry should please come out clean on this issue. So that's what I can say for now. Now, Dr. Charles, before we let you go, let's get your perspective on the role of the National University Commission, NUC. At the start of this year, they published a list of 18 universities that were blacklisted following allegations of certificate racketeering, do you think that the NUC should indeed also move to publish 38 of these accredited universities, like you say, to better inform Nigerian students who are intending and give them a number of options to be able to choose from? Well, I think we need to put this issue into perspective. NUC is National University Commission. The jurisdiction cover universities operating in Nigeria. And any university, any foreign university operating on Nigerian soil that is not uh, accredited licensed by NUC, they should be blacklisted. We are in support of that. But when it comes to foreign university, what a graduate from such university needs in Nigeria is evaluation. And that evaluation is done by a department in the Ministry of Education. So when we are, I don't have anything, uh, I don't have anything against collaboration among the agencies, but we need to put issues in perspective. There is a department, Education Support Services, and there is some department there that evaluates certificates. When we are talking about this, I believe the Ministry of Education should have put skillful people there who understand the rudiments of these evaluation process. They are the ones that will lie to the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Higher Education in the originating country. So I don't even you you you, are, you and I know something is fishy somewhere. It is not only, uh, some people see it as a conspiracy against the poor because it's the children of the poor that are studying in this neighboring African country because it is cheaper to study there. We have in the past detected fake certificate coming from UK, coming from America, coming from Canada. This is a global phenomenon. The exact reason it is been in Republic and Togo, I think these are issues that need to be clarified. Well, if Nigeria government didn't it fit, that you see should be the one to because they could conduct this thing no problem and you see our partnership with their uh, counterparts in francophone african country called camex they can relate with the camex we don't have anything against sanitizing the system as a matter of fact myself and some of my colleagues when we noticed this thing started even before the undercover reporter we went to the embassy of nigeria in one of these countries and we reported to them that this thing is happening the embassy liars with the federal uh, with the ministry of higher education in Benin, and they released the list of the accredited schools so this thing does not require rocket science if Nigeria government wants to find out accredited university, it's simple. Let them write the Ministry of Higher Education rather than depending on somebody say, 
I suspect the reason minister was mentioning that only uh, five uh, university and three in Togo were accredited is because when the committee visited Togo, Togo, the director of uh, private education services was trying to clarify then that some schools are given status of university, they are three. Some schools are a court superior, some schools are institutes. I think that is where they pick that statement. And uh, when a sensitive issue like this, I don't think we should be arbitrary. We should be scientific. Let there be sanity, but let not innocent children suffer unjustly. Many of these children went to the Ministry of Education in Nigeria and convened the university they attended at Predicate. If there is any university that is not accredited or any higher institute, they should be blacklisted. I have no problem about that. My fear is this idea of disengaging 27,000 graduates from a certain country. Please, this, this, is quite, uh, this is quite strange. Now, Dr. Charles, let's digress a bit. I would like to get your thoughts on this practice of awarding honorary doctorate degrees to some uh, celebrated Nigerians. Now, many are saying that it has been largely influenced by their appeal to the social media space in, in the ability to attract intending graduates to the schools, or even somewhat influenced by financial capabilities. What's your take on this? Well, uh, as the name suggests, honorary doctorate is honorary doctorate. It is not an academic qualification. I'm not saying there should be unethical practice. I'm not saying someone who does not deserve it should have it. But you and I know honorary doctoral degree is not a degree one uses to work or one is not even what you add into academic. I am Dr. Adeyemi Charles because I always be in my field of study. That is not the same as one king or one chief somewhere because he is helping the poor in the area and is found worthy in, in being convert honorary doctorate. It happens in Nigeria too. There are holders of honorary uh, doctoral degree who have not even gone to any universities in their life. Mind you, excesses should be curbed. I'm not saying uh, unethical practices should be encouraged. However, this is quite different from what an uh, academic degree is all about. There are a lot of uh, traditional rulers who are holders of doctoral degree from Nigeria University and from universities in Europe and uh, America. So I think that depends on the government council of each university. And any university found one thing in that. Of course, uh, issues can be raised and uh, petitions can even be written. But that does that is not synonymous to say uh, certificate from a certain country from so 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 year. You know, we can't just be doing things arbitrarily. What what is the yardstick? What are the scientific logic upon which decisions are made? This is this is what is disturbing people like us. Now, Dr. Adeyemo Charles, <laughs> as we look to close on this conversation, many are looking at the dynamics of the sanctity of Nigeria's education sector is with also the concern that come the year 2025, this new age policy of 18, restricting intending uh, university students who are not of the age from writing Waieko Neko. What are your projections on the impact of this on the Nigerian education sector? Well, uh, it's my interest to, apart from my training in the medical field, I also study education. I did a postgraduate diploma in education, and I did that in Nigeria University. There is a course content there called developmental psychology. In developmental psychology, the rate at which children grow is not the same. And even Nigeria, that is a plural society, Maturation still varies across geopolitical zones. Like, for instance, Northwest Nigeria has the lowest, according to study available statistics, that's the lowest uh, maturation. Uh, some geopolitical zones are fast, uh, faster than the other. So, a situation whereby we now take the age. 
that this should be the case. Well, I'm talking of my personal opinion. It may not be the best. The countries of the world where they practice that, they have provision for their secondary school liver before they will enter into university. But in Nigeria, whereby once you finish SS3, you go to the university, to take this at the age of 18, when we are seeing uh, <laughs> PhD order at 22, 23 in other countries, I think it's not the best. Another thing is that, okay, a child uh, uh, finishes uh, secondary school at the age of 16. And you insist she should wait until the age of 18 before she could access the uh, university. The question is, what will she be doing within these two years? In other countries of the world where they practice that, they don't experience strikes in their uh, tertiary institution. So, are you saying the, the, the two years, is there, any, is there anything that she will go and learn? Or are we going to leave them idle for two years and allow her to be relating with her father's mechanics or allow him to be seeing the Boko Haram guys in training and join them. So please, whenever we are taking a decision that affects the destiny of the child, of, of a populace like a, a, a big country like Nigeria, I think we need to be very scientific. If we are insisting it should be a J team, there should be provision for what those who are who have finished their secondary school before that age will be doing. Otherwise you may just be creating another pool for the terrorists or for the bandits to come and recruit from. So, if we want to make it policy that it must be a J thing, uh, UK practices such, other countries of the world practice, uh, practice such, what are we putting in place that these children will be doing? Now, Dr. Charles, in answering the question of what they might be doing, many are also suggesting that they revisit a practice that was thriving in the 80s where O-level students have a one-year A-level program under the IGMB before possibly going into university. But others are also asking the economic constraints that some families would have to face in being able to achieve that. Well, that may have been a brilliant idea, but just like you also mentioned, we need to look at our context, what, appear, what applies to us. We all know the middle class is almost is almost disappearing in Nigeria context. In Nigeria, is either you are rich or you are too poor. So rather than putting stress on this uh, family further, why can't we just if the child has capacity for uh, university education at sixteen? Of course, presently the universities are admitting children at age sixteen. They are doing well. So what are we now going to say is the exact reason we are trying to increase the age? In these, uh, gen, uh, you know these Gen Z, their growth rate is not like the growth rate of you and I. So I don't think that is exactly what we need now. But if the government has taken the decision, let us, there is no policy without advantages and disadvantages. Let us mitigate the effect what may happen if we insist that should be the policy thank you very much dr Ademo charles for making our time to grace the program this morning we appreciate you let's show his mind and Dr. Ademo Charles is an academic researcher in Benin Republic. He has strongly advocated that the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, revisit the statement which he made, citing the health condition of some of the guardians and parents whose wards or children might be amongst the 21,600 students said to be parading fake certificates. He says that it might be a case of hasty generalization much in the opinion of uh mr daniels this morning mr daniels let's get your part in short uh to nigerian students you've cited some of the challenges that forced you to ben a republic and your hopes for the nigerian state in being able to sanitize its education sector i i wanted to highlight what he said he he talked about the the five universities uh, listed in ben republic and the Three listed in, in Togo. Now we should understand that these five institutions and the three listed in Togo are mainly public institutions and their mode of instructions are purely French. Uh, and I would ask you sir, 
was your classroom, secondary school classroom, French teacher enough to to impart French knowledge to you to, to be able to gain higher education? In uh, no, no, I mean, when, when you were schooling, well, most of us in Nigeria in secondary school, we are, we are taught French, basically the basic French. Did you like it then? Did you like the French? I classes? enjoyed the conjugation of verbs yes, and whatnot. Exactly. I did. Comment ça va? Comment vous allez? Bonjour. Those were the basics we were taught. We, we can't even make a sentence then. So, getting to Benin Republic and see that the federal universities are having French as their mode of instruction. You can't cope as an English person, as an anglophone uh, citizen from Ghana, part of Cameroon that are also in Benin Republic schooling. It's not just, let's just get this straight. It's not just Nigerians who are in Benin Republic schooling alone. It's since Benin Republic became the center of attraction to people because of their policy. Like I said, they have a good educational policy. The Ghanaians are in Benin Republic. The Togos are in Benin Republic. Cameroon are in Benin Republic. And I'm, being, I'm speaking because I have friends of them, even class uh, schoolmates who are from these countries. Now, since the mode of uh, 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 instruction. Lecture or, or lectures and instruction are purely French in these public institutions, most of us who are from Anglophone countries can't cope in that places. And they don't have a place where they say, come and learn French for one French for Before one year. You go into that, your they, degree. they don't have that in those of the federal institutions. All right. So what they did was uh, along the line, the president instructed that people learn French. So they sent Sibilaye, that is as a group of uh, lecturers. It's their uh, kind of French department. Sibilaye lecturers to various institutions. Sibilaye lecturers from the Republic government was lecturing us too. They sent lecturers from their ministries to come lecture even in the private institutions that we accredited. So I was under the tutor of Mr. Hon. Oh, and so uh, they are, they are we'll, we'll get into that so, time, so, I'm afraid, right. is, is, okay, is okay, not on our side. Let me wrap up this, please. The, the truth is this, that those are reasons why we couldn't go to the federal institutions in Benin. And as a result, we opted into the private institution that are accredited in Benin Republic and in Nigerian Ministry of Education. Like I said, I went to the ministry first. That we went to the private one that actually gave room to... English people to come and, and do study. their program in English. So that's why we went to private. Not that they are not accredited. I think he's working based on information he was given. But I also uh, urge the journalists like you and your colleague to please go to the grounds, to the grassroots, and get information, not what everybody is saying on air. Thank now, you. Mind you, sir, the, the, the undercover journalist didn't go to Benin Republic. Basically, he's... He walked through proxy. Thank Th you. Thank so you very much, there, Mickey Daniel. Tenable. That's why we invited persons like you to get more insight. We appreciate you for the time on the program this morning. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. Well, this is as much as we can accommodate on this two-part discussion on fake certificates and the move to sanitize Nigeria's education sector. Be reminded that you can re-watch this episode on our YouTube channel. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll turn our attention to ADBN Sports at 10. Please stay with us.